That's right. Oh, face wrestling. Listen to the podcast. Listen. They are dark side approved. How that approves it. Oh, face wrestling. I'll be listening. Will you? <laughs> hey, it's your Pan African World Diaspora champion, Trish Adora, and you are watching O Face Wrestling. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today on OO Face Wrestling. This is your host, JT, and today I am joined by co-host Brianna, and we are both joined by the one and only Thunder Rosa. What's up? I'm like choking with my little stuff that I was eating. <laughs> I mean, there's no better way to start off the show, right? Hey. Don't choke. <laughs> hey, but don't choke though, no, yeah. Nice little gag. Um, so, uh, Miss Thunder Rosa, um, we got a lot of questions for you. You were on the show about a year ago. And uh, so much has happened since then, NWA Women's Champion, AEW, Mission Pro Wrestling. So I feel like we got a tons to talk about. Um, mm -hmm. So let's get this interview started. So Brianna, I'm going to start with you asking your question for her. Sure, no problem. So I have a lot of AEW questions. You've been on AEW. And um, it's just, it's been a treat to watch you there. And it's also now a treat to actually do an interview and do like a podcast with you. So I appreciate your time. Um, so I would think, um, wow, where do I even start? So in terms of, um, AEW, so do you have any current long-term goals with AEW, um, in terms of, you know, will there be more people that you may fight or will there be more people from maybe, um, NWA since you are defending the title, the women's title right now, will there be other women maybe from NWA that will come to AAW and there may be some like osmosis of the two brands? You know, it's, it's really hard to say right now because uh, <laughs> I'm working for appearance. So um, it's not like I can say like, oh, let me work with Kenny and try to get something going. You know, it's, it's, it's all about what, what they want to want to do for the brand and for like all the wrestlers in AW and, um, and also like how is that going to affect you know, me as an NWA champion. So right now I'm just kind of floating and seeing um, when they need me or when they don't. Again, we're in, um, uh, we're cooperating with each other, NWA and AW, and they're enjoying my, my presence there. And I'm enjoying being there. Honestly, it's been really pretty amazing. That's good. I'm glad that you've enjoyed it. So in terms of, it seems like AW now sits in one of your biggest repertoire of um, you know, the, the company that you've worked for. I mean, even looking up every single place that you've stepped foot in, I mean, it's over about five or six. I mean, it's a lot. So um, in regards to AEW, I guess, how does it differ from the different promotions that you have been in? It's like, do some crowds like, you know, the technical side of wrestling? Do some just like the, the show of it? Like, and how do you adapt to that? I mean... You just got to adapt to what that show is about. Um, mm -hmm. I, I come from a very old school NWA arena and then jumping into AW, which a lot of the girls, they like to showcase a lot of their stuff, you know, a lot of moves, a lot of like high flying stuff or whatever. And mm -hmm. they know I am pretty good at, you know, either technical or high flying. I work both, both styles. So um, I just adapt to uh, what my opponent is without, you know, sacrificing who Thunder Rosa is in the ring. That's always number one when I step in in the ring, no matter what I do. For me, it's character development and just the presence of Thunder Rosa is so important because I can do really cool moves, but me is like showing who that Thunder Rosa is a badass at the end of the day. No matter if I take heat or if I'm like, you know, giving heat, that's that's what I want, always want to come across. Right. It's interesting. So I was, this is kind of not really a, a AEW question, really, I guess more out of my curiosity is um, I always like knowing how wrestlers kind of wrestlers and, you know, uh, you know, MMAs, um, how they got started in their work. Um, like, what was the moment for you where you were like, okay, this is not going to be, um, you know, a hobby, this is going to be who people know me by as a, you know, being a wrestler, doing MMA, um, besides it just being a hobby, like, was there a moment in which that was like, okay, this is what I want to pursue? Uh, once I, um, I signed up for school and the Ronald Alexander passed away at APW mm -hmm. and uh, I knew that I lost all the money that we invested. That's when I knew this was not going to be a hobby. This is right. what I knew. 
going to be something that was going to get us to the next level on whatever that was. And six years later, I'm talking to you, you know, and I was in one of the biggest stages in the world, AEW, mm -hmm. and I had a match for, um, for a pay-per-view. So um, I think um, once I started making more money on wrestling than on my regular job, that's when I, I said, we're doing this full time. Nice. Nice. I always like hearing about the kind of the, the come up story. Um, in terms of AEW, uh, when you, um, you know, you fought Sheeta and that was an amazing match. I mean, with, I guess when I see matches like that, I always wonder, like, is a lot of it just kind of building off of each other? Is it is it just, you know, are, are you actually choreographing a lot of this, um, you know, beforehand, or is it really with her? Did you just kind of go into the ring and just kind of go off of each other and y'all just, you know, did well, what you wanted I, to do? When you're telling a story, especially for a pay-per-view like this, you have to make sure that whatever, you know, you are doing in the ring looks clean, it looks crisp, and it, it tells a good story, you know, regardless if it's choreographed or not. Um, because you can choreograph all you want, and then it looks like crap, right? right. So um, I think Sheeta really trusted me, and she knew what I was capable of. Like she said, she's never had an opponent like me. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it showed on, on, on our chemistry in the ring, uh, regardless, like I said, um, of what it was done or not. I mean, yeah, we all have hiccups here and there, but I think um, we both, like, did really well. I, I really enjoyed the match, and it was well-paced, and um, – and uh, and people really enjoy it and still talk about it and still you know they they say that that was so far one of her best matches in AW and uh, I mean it will be super dope if we can have like a series of matches mm -hmm. uh, whatever in storyline and um, with her or with anybody in the uh, in the in the locker room at AW I think it's uh, it is really cool when you get an opponent that can help you elevate your style, that can help you elevate you as an, as an athlete. And uh, Thunder Rosa is that. Like, if you step in my ring, I always say this, if you step in my ring, you need to step it up because it's going to be okay. Yeah, it was a really good match, and I think that it really showed that, you know, she trusted you and that, you know, you got there was a mutual trust that you both knew what you were doing, and I think that, you know, that really did show on TV. So I believe that... Um, one of my last questions was about, I think you did an interview a couple of weeks ago, maybe it was about a month, and I think you had mentioned that you um, would have liked to have had, or would like to have at some point, a match with Io Shirai, not Io Shirai, with NXT, um, but I was, but that was very interesting to me, considering, um, you know, where she is, where you are, and though I, I and I would love to see that personally I would pay to see see that I think I, a lot of people would pay to see that main event but I was wondering if there was like anybody else that you have seen that you haven't trained with that you would want to I mean with her she's she's my uh one of my trainers from Japan like gotcha. I didn't get to have a one-on-one -on -one with her because I was really green and I was not a star I didn't have star power so you know I kind of like brush on the side but now it's different like I would love to be one-on-one -on -one with her. I think I can, you know, I can hang with her no, ma no matter what. Uh, I really look up to her. Uh, other people that I, I, I would like to have matches with, uh, I definitely would love to have a match with, um, a longer match with Jordan Grace and Deanna Parasso. Uh, they're like more of my, you know, type style. Uh, very hard hitting. Uh, they love telling stories and they've shown over and over again that they're wrestlers, wrestlers. Um, mm -hmm. Who else? Uh, there's other other women. I can't really think. I uh, just who? I want to have another one with Lacey Ryan because she's like she's in Vegas. She's a great athlete because um, she's always like she always brings the best out of me. So I mean, there's uh, there's a couple ones that I'm like, yeah, I would love to to have that because I I like physical matches more than you know your typical lucha style like high flying hit scissors catch mm -hmm. my arm. Like, you know, I I like to have physical matches and. Um, and Miko Satamura, that's like, that will be, then I can retire after I wrestle her. <laughs> so I think most of my, that was most of my AEW questions. I'm sure more will come up than I really have thought about it. I'm getting the juices flowing, but like, I know you've had a first start in um, the Indies and that's where JT definitely shines. JT, you want to ask some questions about um, some of the 
things going on in indie wrestling that have to do with Miss Thunder Rosa? I do, but I do have one quick question about yeah. AEW. So typically when a wrestler signs with, you know, one of the big mainstream companies, AEW, WWE, usually they kind of go to the mid card and kind of work themselves up to the main, um, you know, the main event. You came into AEW and immediately had a big women's title match at a high level pay-per-view against Sheeta. How did it feel just going to the top right away versus kind of starting at the middle? Yeah, good point. Brother, I'm an NWA champion. I can't be. <laughs> <laughs> I like well, that answer. Go. I mean, honestly, I've been on top for a minute. Just because people don't realize what kind of athlete I am and they don't give me the respect doesn't mean anything. I work just as hard as anybody else in this business, you know, putting people over all the time, keeping my mouth shut and just giving them good matches until somebody realized, hey, this girl can go and this girl is good. And that was NWA. They took a chance on me. You know, um, they saw the potential that, that I had. That I was a diamond on the rough, like they, they call it. And they just gave me the reins and I went and I went with it. You know, that's, that's how it's been. And um, I could have totally shed the bed on AEW with this opportunity. But there was a lot, a lot of expectations when I came in because I came, it came in talking a lot of crap on that. On that one minute promo, I said a lot more than any other person could, could have said about what I was going to do and I was going to bring. And I'm so fortunate that um, I was already ready. I was ready. All these years, I stay ready to step in a ring like that with fans or without fans. It mm -hmm. didn't matter. I was just going to come and kill it. Serena Deeb was you know, thank you so much for being in the ring with me. I appreciate you. And she just got signed. And she was what I needed. You know, like she, it's a great worker. She's been doing it for so long. And there was mutual respect in the ring. And we put a great match in there, you know, and people still talk about it, you know. And, and the fact that Kenny was like, ladies, show what women's wrestling is about. And they gave us 10 minutes. And we show them what women's wrestling is all about in those 10 minutes. And then uh, with Cheetah, the same thing. Champion versus champion. Tell me when was the last time that you saw that, you know? And there was no like, oh, you know what? I'm the NWA champion. I'm this and this. I can't lose. Oh, I'm this and this. Like, da, 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 da. It doesn't matter. I've seen my friends that are in MMA that they were champions in other promotions. They come to the UFC fighting for an opportunity to get a shot at the UFC and they come short. It happens, you know? But they're fighting the best of the best. And that's what I come here. And that's what I'm continue to do. And I will continue to do until I retire. I'm going to wrestle and fight the best of the best. Because otherwise, I am not going to get any better at this. You know? So, um, yeah. Like, we came and we conquer, you know? And, and, and onto the next thing. And, and I will continue to do that. Even if I'm Mitt Carter or I ended up, like, if I sign and I ended up being Mitt Carter, my matches, I'm going to do everything in my power to elevate my opponent. Why? Because I want to elevate the women's division. It's not all about me. It's about uh, bringing, developing, and continue to build women wrestlers for people to come and watch our, our, our matches instead of taking a break during our match because they're like, oh, they're going to botch. Oh, they're going to do this. Oh, they're going to do that. No, that's not me. Right. Yeah, because like women's wrestling back, you know, like 10 years ago, that's how people looked at it. Like I like to call it the divas era, you know, but women's wrestling has really come, a, you know, a long way. There's plenty of great women out there. Just they weren't given the proper opportunities. And now I feel like women's wrestling has taken over. You know, it's hot on the indies. We see how far they've come with women in WWE impact. I feel like they got one of the top women divisions out there. You know, Deanna Peraza, you know, you had mentioned her earlier. You know, um, and now we're seeing these all women promotions, you know, wow, you're a promotion mission pro wrestling, like it's mm -hmm. really taken over. And, you know, going back to kind of the whole you going to AEW and going straight to the top, it's like, yeah, you know, you're Thunder Rosa, you deserve to go to the top just because you haven't been in AEW for, you know, the longest time, you know, you're you know, you're the shit, like you deserve to go right to the top. And that's obviously nothing against, you know, anyone else, but you know, you've been putting a lot of years into the business. And, you know, we don't, and I, and I love the respect and the confidence that AEW had in you because I've seen plenty of great wrestlers go to WWE and they still had to do that. Like Candice LeRae is a beast in the ring. 
she was Johnny Gargano's wife, not a wrestler for the longest time. Um, you know, um, AJ Styles, another really big time wrestler. I mean, he did it. It was a few months. He did kind of, you know, go pretty um, high, pretty fast, but that's, you know, it still took him like a good four or five months before he had a championship match. Your second match with AEW, boom, all out, you know, you're fighting Sheeta. So I love that. You know, I, I, that's the one thing I do like about AEW. They seem to kind of care more about the talent and stuff like that. And they really show an interest in the indies too. Like I've seen plenty of top notch indie wrestlers in AEW. I mean, I know it's a lot in AEW dark, you know, um, Red Velvet's been there. Um, Tasha Steeles was there at one point. So I think mm -hmm. I, I really like what AEW is doing. And I think there's a lot of potential, and a, you know, a big future for the women's division there. I just, a lot of people, you know, have, haven't really given them a chance to. Well, it's a, it's a very, they gotta keep in mind, it's very young. Uh, AEW has been running for less than two years, you know, so um, it's gonna take time. It's like everything else, you know. Um, they're used to seeing a certain type of show and AEW has done that. It's different, you know, they're not WWE. Mm -hmm. So style they have a different way to run business you know and that's what it comes down to again um i was really blessed and uh that i was given a chance to uh be given a match of that this caliber and we were able to perform you know and outperform uh during the 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 pay-per-view you know mm -hmm. and the same when we have uh when we had a, i had my first match with two unsigned people, like that was one of the most watched matches in, in the women's division and Dynamite. So that tells you something. People want to see quality wrestling. They want to see, you know, women that are, you know, there to put a good fight. And I, and, and I know they, that's one, that's why they love Thunder Rosa. And, um, and it, it, it also helps that when I come in the ring, I come with such confidence that, you know, you know, I'm about to beat your ass no matter what. So uh, with or without a championship, that's, that's, that's my thing, man. I am come, I come here to put up a fight, to put a good match. Mm -hmm. This is, like I said, again, this is not about, let me get, let me see how many likes I get. Let me see how many views I get. No, this is, let me show you what women's wrestling looks like. And that's it. Yeah, I think it really speaks to, you know, how passionate you are, but all, and also how, you know, JT was saying, really appreciative of AEW giving you a chance, especially, you know, we're not doing, you know, shows with crowds, people are watching this at home, and it really speaks to you, and it speaks to, you know, the, the work that people like you who have been trying to build a women's division, because, how imagine you have a show there's no crowd and yet the only thing that's blown up on twitter is like this match between thunder rosa and Sheeta or the women's division um on this pay-per-view and it's like there's no crowd and it's like it just speaks to what that means when people take chances on the right folks because you know you have other promotions that are like well there are no crowds so we don't need to do anything we just do the bare minimum until everyone comes back and it's just like we are showing this is like a great example of how, you know, without a crowd, you still put you still put in 100 percent and you're now getting 110 out of it. Yeah. And I will continue to do that. Like That's what I always think. We're performers. We're entertainers, you know, above all. And um, you have to take every opportunity like it's your last, you know, and, and make the best out of it again. Mm -hmm. There can be another COVID happening and I'm out of work again. I'm, I'm in, that's it. This is all I got, you know? <laughs> and like I said, with COVID or without COVID, this was on my book. This was on my book of life. It was written mm -hmm. there. I just had to make the best out of it and continue to run with it. Because again, like, I don't know when I'm coming back to AEW. I don't know when, when I'm coming back to NWA. So um, with or without it, I'm gonna stay. I keep. I'm gonna keep making a statement in the indies. I'm gonna keep making a statement on my on my social media and everything because I'm so passionate about the progression of women in this business. And I'm just not talking about progression in, in the ring. I'm talking about in every single aspect of 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 the business of professional wrestling production. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, agency, um, writing, like all of that. We still super on like there's not that many women in there right right we're not we're not asking for those opportunities we're not demanding for those opportunities yeah we do in order for us to like 
ha instead of having five, seven minutes, we can have 10 to 12 minutes on fucking national TV, you know? But again, it's up to us to perform and to continue to perform to make those demands, always. Right, definitely. And I think with some of the storylines, you can't tell that there are not a lot of women in the room when you see some of the storylines that, you know, that sometimes happen when different promotions, you can just tell it's like, okay, there are not women in this room when we're having these conversations about what the storyline means and who should be in it. And it's like, it, it does give off the impression of like, yeah, there's not a lot of women in the room and that needs to change, but we, it, it has to come from like, we got to get up to that point. Like you mentioned, like, it's not you best wrestler in the world. You could still just get five minutes, but if you were working to get people in the writing and creative and production and sound and, in visuals I mean it all it all plays a part in you know where you get where women get I mean even where the men get where promotions get and I think it does start with having that diversity in higher levels so I definitely agree agree with that statement 100 percent and like speaking of that too, because in Mission Pro Wrestling, you do have a female in the room when it comes to creative. You know, your head of creative is Robin Reed. And I have to say that I am so happy for her because when I had her on the show like eight, nine months ago, she told me that's what she wants to do. She wants to be in creative and you know, everything. And now she's doing it. And um then speaking of Mission Pro Wrestling before I kind of start talking about, you know, some of those things. You know, how did it, how did you start with Mission Pro Wrestling? Like has it been an idea for years? You know, like where did you start with that? No, it was also we started for wrestling after uh, like a year or so that we took a hiatus from running shows. We used to run Sabotage Wrestling, which was in a almost only female. We did a lot of intergender, um, intergender shows. So we started like that, my husband and I. And then we started Mission Pro Wrestling about a year ago with my friend Jeremiah Wilkinson. It was the three of us, you know, just for fun, just to run shows, just because we wanted to have run shows. Do like. Know, have our friends in there have the fans in there you know have a good time then uh the speak out happened and then brian was like hey we need to run this by just with women just with women like nobody nobody else is doing it i mean everybody's talking all this mac and everybody's talking about change and everything but nobody's doing anything really to like make change you know so uh he pulled the plug and i was like there you go one week after we're announcing our next show you know so and that's how we did it it was nothing like yeah man all this time i've been looking for now it's like it was a perfect timing the perfect occasion we got the good we got people supporting and i have a lot of supporters my husband and i were running shows for four years now so we already have a lot of supporters and people believe in what we do you know because we always treat people with respect and um we speak out when we need to speak out and and not in in a negative way but in, in a way where we can make real change and we can, you know, ignite a baby change or baby, baby step for other people to take uh, other steps and do something for, for people that are like underrepresented, you know? So that's what we did. And, and we run that first show and uh, almost two weeks ago and we sold out. Like it was, the amount of support was amazing. Like everybody was really happy to see us back and, it, the crowd was hot. The matches were great. Um, you know, we have great people in, on our on our corner. Uh, I mean, one of the perfect examples is having Jazz as, as our agent. You know, she has so much, so much knowledge to give to all of us. And that includes me, too, because she talks to me all the time, too, about, you know, what I'm doing and how I'm supposed to be carrying myself, too, as, a, as an NWA champion because she's a former champion. So I listen to her. You know, she listens to me because I'm the new generation and I'm doing things that she didn't do when she was wrestling, you know, with all the social media marketing and, and how far you can go without having to actually be in a big company and, and the change that you can create in the landscape of professional wrestling, you know, which um, I feel like a lot of times before it was, you, you couldn't reach to so many people. And now with this platforms that we have, like you guys, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, your website, sorry, my phone is like low in battery. Um, <laughs> that, I've been on my phone all day, so that's what you do. Yeah. So, um, yeah, my 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 goal and and the goal of my team is is to to reach out to people and to really like ingrain in their brain like information knowledge that you don't need to be in a big company 
to be an independent contractor and be successful in professional wrestling. You know, you make your own destiny. You write your own storylines. You write your own journey. And it is okay. Everybody has a different journey. You can be successful no matter what. You know, just because you don't have a certain brand on your accolades doesn't mean that you can do a different, or you can make a difference in your life and the life of others. Um, so, um, yeah, very, um, like I said, I am very, very passionate. That's why you hear me talking about, you know, being respectful and like showing respect and, 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 um, and working with others in a way where you're not putting them down. And I think that's one of the things that a lot of, a lot of women or even me, like I had a lot of bad experiences when I was a green girl with all the veterans and where I felt like I was shut down. Like I felt like I was, my, uh, my opinion didn't matter. You know, and that's one of the things that we're teaching a lot of the girls is like, if you come with that attitude, no matter if you're a veteran or like a green girl, you need to check your attitude outside the door and really come and work. Because that's what we're doing. You need a good dance partner to have an excellent, excellent show. Otherwise, it's all about you. And it's not all about you. It's about the art that you can create in the ring. And it's about the respect that you guys show after, even when there's hiccups after the fact, you know. If you really want to be a badass and if you really want to be like, like my shit don't stink, I invite you to get in the cage. I invite you to, to step in the MMA and really be a fighter and really feel what, you know, really be a badass means and, and what it takes. But other than that, just come and work. Right. <laughs> exactly. Because I mean, you have to look at it as working with a coworker at work. Like if that person is a bad attitude, you know, an asshole or central, like you don't want to work with them. It makes work really difficult. Like and when you're in the ring, you know, you have to trust the person that you're, you know, competing against. You have to trust them to protect you, protect themselves because accidents can and do happen in the ring. And it seems like some of the best matches come from, you know, best friends, you know, I'll use like Sasha and Bailey, for example, like, you know, you need that respect in it. And it goes with the locker room too. Like, you know, there's when I've heard plenty of stories, whether they're true or not with, you know, some wrestlers being toxic in the locker room and it does cause a lot of issues. And going back to the whole, like, you know, you all, you know, deciding to be an all women's promotion, like that's great. Like, cause you don't really, from my knowledge, I know there's a million indie promotions out there, but I don't really hear a lot about, you know, all women promotions. And that's great because you're giving, all these women from the Indies an opportunity to go in there and do, you know, what they're best at. And I enjoyed, you know, your um, event two weeks ago because I love women's wrestling and any opportunity I get to learn about other wrestlers is great. Or if I even know them and I just haven't seen a fight, like that was my first time seeing Promise Braxton have a match. And, you know, I really like her and, you know, kind of like going with how all the support that you all have been given, you know, in this time, social media, like, you know, social media is where it's at. Like you mentioned, like jazz, like, you know, she comes from a different era. So, you know, instead of, you know, word to mouth or, you know, like it was in the past, you have all this technology to really help get your name out there. And the other thing I really liked was streaming, you know, you all, you know, I was able to watch you all on my computer and that's great because I don't live in Texas I don't live anywhere near Texas if you know we didn't have that technology I wouldn't have been able to see this event so I feel like you know you all you know have started off so great so far I'm really excited for your you know future you know events and all that kind of stuff and I mean yeah I mean what you all are doing it seems like you're very well organized I really like the team that you have there like I mentioned I love Robin Reed I thought it was awesome holiday doing commentary you know, I won't argue if she does that all the time. Um, now I, I want to switch up. I know um, your time is probably limited. Um, the other question I really had is, you know how like Ring of Honor and New Japan, they have like a partnership. We see wrestlers from both promotions kind of mix up and all that. Yeah. Is there a chance of something like that happening with you all and AEW? Because I know like Big Swole competed at your event. Will we see like... If, if, if they're interested in, in we can definitely afford them, absolutely. I mean, they're just another asset for the girls to work, people that are on TV, you know, and, 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 and they can see and work in a different way. Um, and like I said, I have a lot of uh, accol not accolades, uh, friends that I know that, you know, they will love to be part of my show. And absolutely, if we can afford them, we will have them there. Um, I want them to learn as much as possible. And um, 
But yeah, to answer to answer your question, yes. <laughs> so I was thinking like it would be cool to see Sheeta and Mission Pro Wrestling and maybe like Holiday and AEW um, stuff yeah. like that would be cool and the opportunities and stuff like that. So now my last question. But then, then, then that right there, we probably need more sponsors to be able to afford Sheeta, you know. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you never know though. Um, but my last question I have for you is I know when I, um, I spoke with Robin Reed on Instagram live back in July, you know, I was asking her if she's ever going to wrestle for mission pro. She said that at the time she doesn't have plans. She wants to more so focus on creative. So you being, you know, the owner of mission pro wrestling, I know you did compete, you know, at the very first event in the main event. Do you plan on continuing to wrestle for most of the events or are you kind of going to start taking like the back seat? First ones, I will continue to wrestle, but once, uh, you know, we crown our first champion and then we start, like, you know, getting more of a core uh, people, I, I'd rather not. I really want to focus on, like, producing and being able to see what the cameras look like, what camera we want to see. Like, I'm working on all of that. Every single place that I worked uh, on TV, I like to work or see production because that's what I want to do at the end of the day. Like I want to get proficient, proficient at it. And maybe once I retire work production for, for professional wrestling, again, there, if we are very, um, there's not a lot of women in production. There's very, very few and far. It's a lot of work, but that's the most important part of like a, a professional wrestling show is production, how they edit, how, you know, how you at home are seeing these matches because some, sometimes they did do miracles. They do miracles. Like, when I first started, I was doing Lucha Underground, all the crap, like, I was like, oh, that was terrible. And, and they get it to a point where I actually look semi-decent, you know? So, uh, I mean, that's that's my goal. And uh, hopefully in the next couple of months, that's what we do it. And, but yeah. Yeah, because like, I know like you, you're a well-established name. So I kind of was, ex you know, figured, you know, you would wrestle at the first event, you know, just to kind of help get your brand out there. But I just, you know, wanted to know if that was something we continue seeing. But yeah, it makes sense. I mean, I will never argue about seeing you wrestle at events, obviously. But, you know, at the same time, I get it. Like, because you're basically doing two jobs and like you're wrestling and then you're doing production. I get that. That's, you know, a little overwhelming. So it is because you have to like wear two hats. And, you know, doing main events, to me, like, I can't because I have to be out. I want to watch, like, girls' matches because I want to give them feedback, you know, at the end of the day. Like, that's what we are there for is to, when you finish your match, I have notes on your match. And, you know, this is what you need to work on for our next show. Or when you go to another indie show, the, the things that you feel like you were kind of lacking won't work on another indie show that is not being streamed. I always tell, I always tell the girls that every time I want to try a new move or a new sequence or something i'll go and do it in a in a smaller show when there was not that was not streamed so if i messed up nobody will see it just the people that were there and i was like okay this didn't work this didn't go well with the fans this is what i need to do let me let me try it on the next show and that's when i started doing certain things and that's when i started oh, okay this this works oh this is kind of whack you know um but again it, that's that takes time that takes you know people that actually watch my match and like dissected it and and that's important because sometimes you go and do all the shows and you think your your stuff don't stink. And then you go to all, you go to national TV or you go and do darks and then your match was not good. And it's again, that's a testament that you're not working hard enough to get yourself over and to work on your craft when you know your opponent is not as strong as you are. I always tell them that the girls, you know, you gotta be very mindful. When you do things, do them right and do them with no help. So if anything happens, your opponent don't look bad and you don't look bad. The match is just, you know, an okay match and they'll bring you back. Exactly. Like, you know, get humbled. yeah, <laughs> but yeah, basically, it, you know, it's like you're telling a story in the ring, you know, and that's what people want to see. You know, they want to see like a story being told, you know. Um, and plus, you know, you know, going back to like, you know, the production and all that kind of stuff, you know, and I, I say this all the time, no wrestler can wrestle forever. You know, you're setting yourself up for life after wrestling. And that's great because you're doing it while you're still like in your prime of wrestling. So, and that's good because you never know too, you can go out next Wednesday and have a match and have a career and an injury, but you know, you're set, you at least have, you know, mission pro wrestling to lean on and stuff like that. Cause a lot of people, and they don't always have that mindset. They think, Hey, I'm wrestling. I'm going to do this for 10 years, you know, I'm fine. And then, you know, boom, you know, it happens. That's, you know, the profession you're in, it's very dangerous. And yeah. stuff like that. I mean, I'm doing professional wrestling and professional uh, mixed martial arts. You know, things can happen. Like I, I got injured like maybe like three years ago, not three years ago, three, three months ago, my knee, it was whack. Like I couldn't do anything for like 
like I couldn't wrestle, wrestle. I go in a, a wrestling class for about two months, but I still had to wrestle because this is my job. Mm -hmm. So I have to be very careful, man. And then once I start getting ready for our next fight, like I have to be mindful, like the bumps that I take, the things that I do, you know, at the end of the day, it's my life. This, my money, my, they said, my body is my money maker. I always tell them that and they laugh, but it's true. You know, I have to stay in shape. I have to stay healthy. And um, I can't sacrifice that because I want to do a dumb spot to like pop the boys or to pop, you know, the, the people. I have to be safe and I have to keep my opponent safe too. Exactly. Because yeah. like I mentioned earlier, you know, you have to trust your opponents. And if you, uh, if, if you like are someone who's really reckless in the ring, people aren't going to want to work with you. I know like a few years ago, her name's Sexy Star. Or I think that's her name. She intentionally injured her opponent and I haven't heard her name since then like no one no promotion is going to want to book someone you know um that's a really no i it, everybody has a different opinion about that one and um it, it was really really sad that that happened the way that it happened you know i've talked to like sexy and that really tarnished her whole career it mm -hmm. was um she can tell you she, it was never her intention to hurt anybody mm -hmm. you know and i you know put any words on anybody i know this is something that people still talk about and it's really sad, you know, but that also, again, can tell you that um, you can go in with the best intentions in the ring, but if your opponent don't like you or she feels, or he feels that you are trying to do something, they will try to bury you just because mm -hmm. you could either go both ways. I mean, we saw that with, um, with another championship, WWF um, in, in, it's it's just it's 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 such a like fine line you know that you have to that you have to play <clears throat> again always keep your prof professionalism in inside and outside of the ring and try to make the best out of every match regardless if like it's caught garbage at the end of the day just keep your cool and whatever happens in there just you, you know apologize and, and work harder to make make the next match the best match you can you know that's the only thing you can do and like I said, with Sexy Star and, and Rosemary, it was a very unfortunate incident. And, you know, it's it's just really, really sad. Yeah, I mean, I apologize. I think I worded it wrong. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I remember the thing, you know, and I was a big fan of Sexy Star because I remember I watched her on Lucha Underground. And that was my first time seeing intergender wrestling. I was like, wow, this girl is out there kicking the men's butt. I was like, this is really cool. But yeah, like, you know, like I said, I worded it wrong. Um you know um but yeah i mean like i said everybody has a different opinion but it's very important that you we all have to look at you know what happened and everybody has their own truth right to do things and uh and that can happen to any any of us you know you can go in there and then hurt somebody by not having any intentions to hurt them you know i get that's one thing i noticed because like it happened to me before and i'm not gonna give names or anything when i was a lot greener people hurt me I got concussed, you know, I got a shoulder popped and not, it doesn't feel right because that made me not work for two months. You never want to do that to your opponent. Cause you know, the next day they have another booking, you know? So it's like, it's, it's such a fine line, especially when people having beef with each other or they feel like a certain way that, cause they're going to feel like you are trying to do something to finish them or to like do something, which is not the case. Um, at least I'm speaking like about me, you know, I will, I will not do that to anybody because I know this is, this is our job, you know? And, um, but that's a, and maybe in old school, that's, that was okay to do, you know, to like put somebody down, just like show them respect, but what for? Right. Like at the end of the day, it's a job. And like, you know, I, I work one of those nine to five that at my computer or like, you know, JT works the jobs, not wrestling. I mean, it would be like any other situation. Like I can't just go and, sabotage somebody because I don't like them like at the end of the day your work will speak for itself and you'll sink or swim at the end of the day it doesn't matter who you bring down and I can only imagine with wrestling you know we always joke about you know it's not real or it's fake or whatever but like there is a there is that percentage of wrestling that I still feel is very much real and it's very much like emotions get involved and like it is, I think it's very important and maybe you can speak to this and it's very important that you keep your emotions in check and you leave that at the door because your job is in the ring. And 
it, and not to say that it's not a problem or that it's a problem to bring your emotions in the ring, but like to not let them overwhelm you to the point where you're like, I, I need to go hurt somebody or I need to go injure somebody because I'm mad in this moment. I'm mad right now where it's in too much. You may not even remember what you're mad about, but you have injured somebody and they can't work for like a year. Yeah. You know? No, oh, it's, it's, that's like, like I said, it's a very fine line. You can only control yourself. You cannot control the other person's emotion, you know? And that's one of the things that I always have to come in the ring, even when I get mad or, or when things don't go the right way, mm -hmm. I have to stay professional. Cause at the end of the day, I still have to put a match and a performance, no matter what, you know, that's what they pay me for. That's what I'm here for. And, um, at the, if the other person feels that I was to, trying to do x y and z and if we can you know have a conversation we will if we if we don't we don't and and just you gotta leave it as that you know and and that's when you're you have to use your your social skills and in in your big girls your girl pants and be like all right you you take you you yeah, own this. your mistakes yeah. and then you know you say sorry when you need to say sorry you gotta move on you know uh, again it's like there's bigger fish to fry at the next day. I don't know. It, it's just, you know, things happen in the ring and then just, it, it just happens. But again, you got to be professional. That At the end of the day, that you need to be professional. Exactly. I couldn't agree more. Regardless of what your profession is, it's always best to be professional and to really, you know, just go in and do your job at the end of the day. Yes. Um. Miss Thunder Rosa, I believe that's all the questions. Brianna, you got everything that you wanted to get out? Oh, definitely. I can't wait to talk to people that, about the time that I got to talk to Thunder Rosa. <laughs> that's <laughs> it right. Yeah. Right in the RO phase chat room. But yeah, Miss Thunder Rosa, thank you so much. Thank for, you so uh, much. Today. I know you're really busy, so it was definitely an honor to have you on the show for the second time. And, uh, thank you for having me. Thank you for being our one of our big sponsors on the next two shows. We do appreciate your investment on this. Like, um, it's just not because you guys are dropping money. It's because you guys believe in what we're doing at the end of the day, you know, and, and you believe in indie wrestling. And I know, I'm telling you, when we had Sabotage before, just to get sponsorships was so hard. It was so hard. But I feel with now with the change that we did and, and Mission Pro and, and what you guys see is like, you guys are invested and you guys are investing in our ladies. Because a lot of ladies, they're coming from Colorado, from New Jersey, from Arizona, from like all these places, Orlando, you know, you name it. Because they want an opportunity, they want to be seen and they want to learn, you know. And if, without you guys, we probably wouldn't be able to like bring some of the talent that we, we're bringing. So thank you so much. No problem at all. I mean, you know, over here at O-Face, we love women's wrestling and anything I could do to help support, you know, I'll definitely do it. You know, I do my best to give, you know, you all a spotlight on the show. I'm trying to grow the show so I can continue to do stuff like that, especially with like women who are newer to the business. That's kind of one of my big goals to start doing in the future. So, I mean, you know, I'm helping you all and then you being on my show is helping us grow at the same time. So we're both, you know, we both have a mission and we're both, you know, doing it, you know, at the end of the day. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's not a problem at all. Um, so, uh, yeah, Miss Thunder Rosa, did you want to share any of the social media for yourself or your, you know, Mission Pro Wrestling? Yeah, so you guys can find Mission Pro Wrestling on missionprowrestling.net. We will be uploading our videos for the show if you guys want to purchase it. Single matches for the whole show pretty soon. Uh, we also have custom matches available for purchase. Or if you're a type of person that you like to see a certain match with certain people and have your stipulations or whatever, we also sell custom matches. Uh, all the prices are in there. This supports girls to pay their rent, to pay their bills, to pay all this stuff during this like really tough times and also support us as, as a small business. Um, and we have merchandise in there. Uh, for me, I have thunderosa.net. You can find all my socials there at thunderosa22, which is Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And my YouTube is connected there. And what else? Uh, new merchandise is dropping in the next couple of weeks. Um, we have tons of Ava 10s, personalized videos, a Skype phone calls, which I know a lot of people don't like those, but I do Skype phone calls with my fans with a, with a fee, of course. Uh, we can talk about wrestling, you know, food, Drago, your girlfriend. I don't care. I'll, I'll be there for you. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm an entrepreneur, y'all. I do cameos. You can find me on Cameo too. And um, 
again, thank you so much for all the support, for all the retweets, for, you know, tagging Tony Khan and Billy, and Billy Corgan for like, you know, keep bringing Santa Rosa to AEW. That means a lot. Yeah. I mean, once, you know, everything goes well and, and we start running again or, you know, I get a big contract. It's, it, it's not because of me only is because of you, your help too. Of course. Yeah. That, yeah. That was a lot. Yes. Wow. So make sure y'all check Thunder Rosa Mission Pro Wrestling on all social media, you know, check out the custom matches, the cameos, Skype phone calls, all of that. And then also make sure you follow us on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, just search O Face Wrestling and you'll find us. Um, mm -hmm. Once again, um, thank you so much, um, Thunder Rosa, for joining me and Brianna over here at O Face Wrestling. Thank you. Thank you. And don't forget to chase and follow your dreams and make them happen. That's it. Exactly. And thank you all for tuning in to O Face Wrestling. Uh, thank you guys. For our next episode next week.